Good afternoon, everyone. Country Flyboy here, and today, Vokas. So, we're going to discuss how to do a proper BCOA departure. For some reason, my window is fogging up. That might be why. So, what is a VCOA departure? VCOA departure is a type of obstacle departure procedure, so you can find these in the takeoff minimums document. Now, what is an obstacle departure procedure? It's a way to get you safely away from the airport in IMC conditions. So, this is a towered airfield. Would you normally fly these here? Not really, because tower is going to give you radar vectors. These types of procedures are more for non-towered airfields or towered airfields after the tower has closed down for the night and you need to depart IFR. So, we're here at Valdosta Regional in Valdosta, Georgia. Call, uh, identifier Victor Lima Delta. And we're on an IFR flight plan to make it. Now, let's just assume the tower was closed down for the day, or it wasn't open today. And uh, we got our IFR clearance from Jacksonville Center on the RCO. So, our clearance was... Let's see. Our clearance was cleared to Macon via Tifton Myers, then is filed. Climb and maintain 4,000, expect 8,000, 10 minutes after departure, yada, 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 yada. That was our clearance. <coughs> so in that clearance, they told us from the Tifton VOR as filed. They did not tell us how to get from Valdosta to Tifton. So we have to cook up our own way to get to uh, Tifton. So we can do that however we need to. We can go direct, we can use an airway, we can do whatever it is we need to do. In this case, we have an airway, Victor 579. I got the chart right here next to me. Victor 579 can take us from Valdosta right to Tifton. So I've tuned the Valdosta VOR and the airways outbound radial is 347 from Valdosta. But we need to get safely up. Let's say the winds favored runway 31 for departure. I don't know if they actually do. That windsock over there looks like they might actually. But 3-1 uh, is this short runway right next to us, and we wanted to take off from 3-1. There is an ODP for 3-1, so we need to know about that. What is the ODP? Runway 3-1, climb and visual conditions. Okay, that right there tells us we need to now look at the takeoff minimums just above the ODP section in the uh, airfield's entry in the takeoff minimums document. So takeoff minimums, runway 31 is standard with a climb of 220 feet per nautical mile to 900. Visibility minimums are not, uh, ceilings in 900 feet, two and a half mile visibility. I don't know about you, but I think we meet those minimums. Okay, so <coughs> in order to fly this procedure, the ceilings have to be at or higher than 900 feet. And we have to have two and a half miles of greater of visibility, which we certainly have. Let me switch over to tower real quick, because that's the one I need to be on. Alrighty. So, for the climb and visual conditions, cross Valdosta Regional Airport at or above 1,000 MSL before proceeding on course. Okay, so the way this works is we take off, and like any other departure procedure, we fly runway heading to 400 feet. All departure procedures, unless otherwise noted, assume runway heading to 400 feet. If they say something otherwise, then you follow what they say. But uh, if they don't say anything else, it's runway heading to 400 feet above the field. We make sure our altimeter is set correctly. Airfield is just above 200 feet elevation, so 400 feet would be 600 feet on the altimeter. So at 600 feet, we can safely proceed on the rest of the ODP. The ODP for a VOCA is a circle. Uh, it's basically a corkscrew approach. If you know the corkscrew approach that military airplanes like to fly, where they s spiral over or off to the side of the field and then land, that's basically what the VOCA is. It it's a corkscrew, but in the opposite direction. We're climbing instead of descending. So we circle the airfield until we're at 1,000 feet MSL, as it says. After that, we can maintain the minimum climb gradient of 200 feet per nautical mile and go in any direction and we won't hit anything. So <clears throat> that's a generic VOCA. Take off, runway heading to 400, circle over the field until the, um, the minimum altitude specified by the procedure. Then you can proceed in any direction 
at the minimum climb gradient and you won't hit anything. So for this VOCA, the top altitude is a thousand. At a thousand feet we can proceed in any direction. According to the procedure, we have to maintain a minimum climb gradient of 220 feet per nautical mile to 900. So I have a table here, and you can look this table up. If you Google um, climb gradient to climb to rate feet per minute, if you just Google that in image search, you should be able to find this table. It was the first, uh, first one I found. And it's printed in the back of Terminal Procedure Publications. What it is is a... Uh, a way you can quickly find out what the minimum feet per minute is for the climb gradient you need. So this so this airport or this aircraft has a ground speed on departure of around the 90 knots. It depends on the wind, but anywhere between 90 and 100 knots is where this plane plane's ground speed is on the takeoff and climb initial. So a 220 feet per nautical mile. At 90 knots, we need at least 350 feet per minute, which we can most certainly meet in this airplane. So that's something you need to check prior to departure. We can meet that in this airplane, but if it was a hot day, if we were heavy or anything like that, that's when these uh, things come into play. You need to make sure you can meet those before accepting the clearance to fly them. Okay. So we've discussed generic VOCAs real quick. We're just going to uh, discuss what's going to happen on this VOCA in particular. We're going to take off runway 31. Let me go in the top down view here. This runway right here. And we're going to fly runway heading until 400 feet. Make sure we par pass the departure end of the runway at at least 35 feet. We should have no problem doing that. Runway heading to 400 feet. And then we're going to make a left turn to circle the field. And with any VOCA, you would circle the field until you're at the minimum altitude. In this case, the minimum altitude is 1,000 feet before we can proceed on course. So uh, that's not going to take long to do. <laughs> Definitely not. <coughs> All right, so we'll circle the field until 1,000. Then we can proceed on course with the minimum climb gradient of 200 feet per nautical mile until the minimum IFR altitude, which since we're going to be using the airway to get to Tifton, is 2,200 feet, which is the MEA for the airway. Alright, so what direction are we going to turn? Well, I said we're going to turn to the left. How do you know which direction to turn? Well, you don't really, unless it tells you. In this case, it doesn't tell us, so we can assume any direction will work. Since there's not much of an altitude difference between the, uh, the um, 600 foot uh, start turn altitude and the 1,000 foot safe to go altitude we can do a left turn because we're going to be departing to the north so if we go to the left we should roll out on the north heading at about 1,000 feet somewhere around there so again follow my mouse take off 3-1 cross departure end at above th uh, 50 feet technically 35 feet but we'll just round that up to 50 400 feet on runway heading do a left turn Circle the airfield to 1,000 feet, then proceed on course. We're guaranteed that once we get above 1,000 feet, we're not going to hit anything if we maintain the minimum climb gradient of 200 feet per nautical mile. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Landing and strobe lights on. This is a mock IFR flight, so we're technically flying VFR, transponders to altitude, but um, we're going to pretend we're IFR. All right, lights, camera, action, windows are closed. Let's get on the runway. All right, so we're ready to go. I have the heading bug set to runway heading. <coughs> and we've already reviewed our departure procedure. So again, I'm gonna walk through it as we do it. I've got the um, VOR on the HSI set for the outbound heading that we need to fly. That's the airway right there. All right, so we're gonna set full throttle. Stay on the runway, rotate at about 65 knots. Climb out at VY, 
There's 50 feet. All right, we're crossing the departure into the runway now. There's 400 feet, we can start our circle. There's 900 feet safe, we can do a minimum climb gradient. There's 1,000 feet. So now we can proceed in any direction at the minimum climb gradient of 200 feet per nautical mile and we won't hit anything. I'm gonna continue our turn over the airfield and join the airway. Now, if you can imagine um, a cylinder of airspace is erected around the airport. Remember the visibility requirement of two and a half statute miles? That is how wide that cylinder is. So if you can imagine a two and a half mile radius around the airport up to the safe altitude of a thousand feet. Just imagine that. That's how f close we need to stay to the airport. So sometimes when you're flying these procedures it may require a steeper than normal bank. Uh, normally you don't want to do anything more than standard rate for IFR flights but sometimes you might require more than standard rate to make the focus. And that's okay. All right, so as we climb up to 4,000 feet and join the airway, we're really close. To, I mean, we're practically right over the VOR. So I am just going to fly this heading here until we get far enough away from the VOR that the cone of confusion isn't going to screw with us. So yeah, you might have to have a steeper than normal turn rate to make the Vocas because you have to stay within inside of that cylinder in order to be protected. In this case, it was two and a half miles. So for most airplanes, that shouldn't be a problem. The second you start flying jets, though, that's when uh, things start to become problematic. All right, so as we climb through 3,000 feet, heading up to 4,000, attempting to get on the airway, that does it for VCOA departures. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.